Okay, so how do you make a piece of music that you've just learned sound better once you can actually play it in time with the notes right? What that means is, of course, clear notes. We don't want... That doesn't count. We want some kind of smooth rhythm or something. We don't want like a jagging ring in the chords. I talk about how to get a piece of time in music with a metronome in another piece, but for the sake of it, you put something on, you go one and two and, and you just play. You might just do that. This starts to breathe life in because you're not trying to do the whole thing. And that might be all you add. So you just kind of trying to feel the metronome. If you can count out loud, it's so powerful. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four. It keeps you focused in the beat. So this is the first thing getting it in time really really important because that's the beat that everyone dances to but you could have a whole pile of things going on like this or it could be as simple as this and just that different sounds there can make piece of music come alive but hide a lot of inadequacies in your playing as the guitar player so we're going to accent the one and the three first and then the two and the four now how does that sound without that so we got this basic so we got this one louder the three one two three Accent, 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 accent. Now we're going to accent the two and the four. One, two, whoops. One, two, whoops. What if we accent the ands instead? They're kind of like the up feeling notes. Now, of course, I'm over accenting. If I was trying to not over accent, I might have this kind of vibe. Two. Four. Okay, you get the idea of how there's variance in the way I play it, as opposed to me playing with that, thinking about any of that stuff at all. Like, there's no life compared to. There's no life compared to when you first train your body and muscles to pull all these things out. And I'm kind of, this is as clumsy as you might be. You're trying to talk out loud, you're trying to focus on it. You may have the metronome on telling you, in fact, it's often easier with the metronome, but you've got to deal with suddenly you're thinking differently instead of just going. You try to retrain your body to hit some of them louder, some of them are up, some of them are down, and then you wanna, once you were hit louder, you're trying to not hit them louder, now now you're hitting them softer. And you're 
experimenting. Not every combination will be the right one to make the piece sound right. But within the process, you may find I like that one accented, that one and that one. And when you play it now, your body has practiced all those different accents and it will apply it. Now, that also applies, of course, to using a pick and a guitar, you know, sorry, and strumming and going like, if I was to just play this like this. Two and three and four and one and 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 two. I'm only hitting the one, but if I hit it. At least there's some life in really doing it on purpose. But there's the... And I'm really being rough and ragged. But there's the one, three, one, three, four, one, two, three. And here's... Three, four, one, two, 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 three. Now if I put the ands, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, and two and three, and two and three. then I'm going to turn it up. I'm not saying that's nice, okay? But if I have combinations of Another way to bring life into a piece of music like this, and I'm going to put the tempo back up to 80 or maybe 90. Here's what we had before. A lot of people don't actually think about where the notes exactly fall in time. They think about that it's kind of about there's the beat, there's the beat, there's the beat. What we want to do is go, if this is the beat, we want to actually be able to put it a little bit on this side of the beat, a little bit on this side of the beat, and right on the beat, and find out where it actually musically feels better or best. Because in the old days when we had drum machines and the like, and they weren't humanized, everything was actually perfectly in time, right on that beat, and it didn't sound right, because no human, or not many humans, are actually going to play like that. Now, you want to be able to variance how and where you put your in and out of timeness within an overall structure of time or something for the audience to feel, or else they won't be able to dance along or kind of enjoy your music. It's, it's super important. And the way we start learning how to slightly move our placement of our notes once we can play it, once we actually know how to also control our accents, is focusing, again, only on the one. So if I was to count two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and we just play that note only. Two, three, four, two, three, four. But we try to hit it in front of that note, three, four. So we've got like one, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Two, three, four. See, I'm really obviously early. You try without me. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Beat that note. Three, four. Two. Now we're going to play late. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to play on. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now, that little bit of just me doing it, not sure if you did it with me, notice that when I said, now I'm gonna play it on after I tried to play it in front and behind, I was almost spot on it. And you could hear the difference. You could hear the metronomes even changing the way it sounded as I played what I was playing. Or as I just played one note, I should say, trying to move its placement on that number one beat. Imagine that with lots of other notes going on. So the way you might want to do it is you might just, you don't have to do this strumming pattern that I'm doing or picking pattern. I'm not going to change chords this time. It's just going to stay there. You might um, get your pick and you might go. 
you might go. Don't really care what kind of thing you might strum it. But what I do want you to do is whatever that is, that ever that first rhythmic strike on beat one, I want you to put it early. I want you to beat the one with that one note only and then let the rest just keep playing them. If you can, count one, two, three, four, but beat the one, be early. Let's see, three, four. Let's just get the piece before I try to do that again. Feel the time. Remember, I'm not doing chord this time, chord changes. I'm also not worrying about accents. So we got one, two, three, four, early. Three, four, two, three. Now I'm gonna to try to be late. Three, four, one, three, four. Now I'm gonna be early again. One, two, three. Here's, now this time I'm gonna be on. Hopefully, late. All right. I'm gonna try to experiment with that instead of stopping and do the piece. And I'm just going to go into my own head and I'm gonna to try to put all of the first notes for the chord changes early on that one beat. And I'm gonna put on this feel here. Um, no. So everyone knows where the one is. Here we go, early. Here we go, early. Trying to be early. Three, four. This is harder than you can possibly believe if you've never done it. After that one, considerably late, on purpose. Making accidents on purpose is awesome. Two, three, late. Two, three, four. Three, four. Don't worry if your body memory goes out a bit. Late. Three, four. Two, three, four. Now, early. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So you want to kind of go in front of the beat and behind the beat on purpose. In front, behind, in front, behind. What we really want is to be able to find the center, but by purposely going to the left and the right, what will actually happen is it makes it easier to find the center. If you're just trying to find the center, often you can be a little bit here and a little bit here and it's really hard to pull it back unless on purpose you play on both sides in different spaces away from that beat until you can do it and then until you can do it on purpose. So once more I'm gonna go a few times, oh, no, I fit. I'm just gonna play the, my best to be right on after I've done a little bit of in front and behind muscle training. Two, three, four. What I'm actually trying to do instead of be right is fine. The groove where the metronome comes alive. Now I'm thinking that instead of in front. 
and I'm just trying to notice how my first note relates to that drum, bass drum. Don't care a bit about my messy notes because my focus is only on the one. If I'm not finding it, I might be late on purpose like that one. Most people actually be late on purpose. Now I'm gonna be in front. Kinda of too far in front. Now you may have to do this at a quite slow tempo than what it really is to really focus in on this. You may need to drop out some notes and just play one or two. You may just need to go or whatever your piece is because you just want to focus on finding the placement of that one. Now I threw a bit of a curveball there because this actual sound of this bass drum, if, listen to it. It's quite a wide sound in time. It's not short, it's boom. And this happens a lot of time in music. When you place your note, your bass note, on whether it, well, let's say the bass player's note might go boom. If you've all seen a wave file, you see it goes, spikes up, and then it kind of goes off like that on a trail. Now that we can all see our wave files on digital workstations and flows, as opposed to the old days on tape. Now, where in this whole little peak of that sound, do you, which bit do you actually put on the exact moment of the mathematical one or two or three or four? So what we're doing by moving our physical playing of that note around on either side of the one, by default, our ears are hearing that spiky bit move, where that big wide bit, it's moving where it actually sits around this beat. And in this case, around this bass drum that itself is big and I, almost to me the bass drum in this sounds like it's late. So by doing this by default you will hear that metronome move and at some points the metronome will sound like it went out of time and other times it'll sound like the metronome sounds really sweet even the tone changes it sounds brighter or darker and what you're looking for is not no rule from Nick telling you what's right or what's wrong. You're looking for the one that attracts your ear, the one that starts to feel like it has a groove. And then you, you keep pulling your body into that groove. So it kind of sounds a bit out there and it's not about learning lots of new songs or scales or all these different techniques. It's about actually learning how to play in time and breathe life into your music. And every professional has done this because they play in a way that breathes life in, because they've learned to go beyond thinking about what their fingers are doing and listening to the sounds, interacting with rhythms and accents. All right, that's today's lesson today. Go and have some fun. Check you later. Nick Tung. Please don't forget to subscribe and like.